Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Yesterday we talked about that Khidr alayhi salam had prepared 1,000 different kinds of tests for Musa alayhi salam. And I told you that we will talk about whether Khidr alayhi salam is considered a wali, when in English you can say a saint, or was he a prophet, was he a messenger, was he an angel? Well, there are differences of opinion when it comes to this. Among the Sufiya, there is one group that says that Khidr alayhi salam was a saint, was a from awliya, uh, from awliya. Uh, and this is the opinion that is stated in Ali Sabah, volume number two, page two eighty nine. As far as Imam Qushayri is concerned, um, who passed away uh, four hundred and sixty five year of Hijri, which is like a thousand years ago, he says that Khidr alayhi salam uh, was not a prophet. He was from the awliya. He was a saint. And Imam Qushayri, if you want to know his full name, was Abdul Karim ibn Hawazin bin Abdul Malik. And he is also known by the kunya of Abu Qasim. He was from Khurasan and he was a very famous Sufi sheikh. And he wrote a very famous work of Ar Risala al Qushayriya which is considered one of the foundation writing work in uh, Tasawwuf in, among the Sufiya. He passed away in Nishapur or al almost a thousand years ago. And Imam Mawardi, uh, he states that Khidr alayhi salam is a prophet of God. And he states that some people are of the opinion that he is from the saints or the awliya. And he says that some people are also of the opinion that he was an angel from the angels who appeared in the form of a human being. However, Imam Nawawi rahimahullah says that this statement that he was an angel from the angels who appeared in the human form is very, very weak, very da'if, very gharib, and very batil in terms of its um, statement. So, so it's it's... It's completely rejected by the Jamhur, this particular viewpoint. And uh, this statement of Imam Nawawi and some of the other details comes in Tahzeeb al Asma'i wal Lughat, volume 1, page 177. And also, Imam Nawawi writes it in uh, the Sharh of Sahih Muslim because Imam Nawawi is one of those individuals who are very famous for writing um, the Sharh, which is the tafsir of hadith, is called Sharh. And in that, in Kitab al Fada'il, Fada'il al Khidr, he states that. Uh, so similarly, in Hayat al Haywan al Kubra, volume 1, page 480. We also find Imam Nawawi's statement. When it comes to Abu al-Khattab bin Dahiya, who died almost 800 years ago, he states that we do not know um, that he's an angel, or he is a prophet, or he is um, an Abd al-Salih, or from the awliya, from the saints. And who is Abu al-Khattab bin Dahiya? Uh, he is from Andalusia, from Spain, when Muslims used to re rule Spain from that era. And he is considered to be one of the renowned scholar when it comes to adab and history, which is called tarikh and fiqh and hadith. And he is also the author of Kitab al-Tanweer, which is uh, one of the famous work on the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, though he passed away in Cairo, in Egypt, Abu al-Khattab bin Dahiya. His name is uh, Umar bin Hussein bin Ali, uh, but he's commonly known as Abu al-Khattab ibn Dahiya. And among several ulama, it is of the opinion that Khidr alayhi salam is a prophet. Imam Thalabi says that uh, after looking at all the different statements, it is apparent that Khidr alayhi salam is a prophet. And this is stated in Al-Isaba, volume 2, pages 288 and 289. And Imam Nawawi is also of the opinion that Khidr alayhi salam is a prophet, as comes in Tahzeeb al Asma'i wal Lughat, volume 1, page 177. Abu Hayyan al Undulusi al Garnati, he was from um, Garnata or Garnata, which was in the Muslim Spain, 
and his name was uh, Athiruddin Abu Abdullah Muhammad, the son of Yusuf, the son of Ali, the son of Yusuf, and he is from Andalusia. He's commonly um, famous among the ulama by the name of Abu Hayyan, and he's a very famous um, alim in the hadith. He's a muhaddis. He's also has written work in tafsir, so he's a, uh, from the mufassir. Uh, he is also uh, somebody who has a great grasp on um, the Arabic language, the Arabic literature, and his famous, very famous work of tafsir, especially ulama and those of you who have gr- um, who have read different tafsir might have heard of this tafsir called Al-Bahr al that is written by Abu Hayyan al-Andalusi wrote this. So he says that Jamhur is of the opinion that he is a prophet. And this is also stated in Al-Isaba, volume 2, page number 289. And Hafiz ibn Kathir, a lot of you are familiar with him and his famous work of Tafsir and Tariq, uh, which is Al-Bidaya wa Nihaya. He writes that Khidr alayhi salam is a prophet. And in Surah Kahf, there are several different proofs of he being a prophet of God where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says فَوَجَدَ عَبْدًا مِّنْ عِبَادِنَا آتَيْنَاهُ رَحْمَةً مِّنْ عِنْدِنَا وَعَلَّمْنَاهُ مِنْ لَدُنَّا عِلْمًا So when Musa alayhi salam reached that point where he found عَبْدًا مِّنْ عِبَادِنَا that he found one of the abd, one of the slaves from the slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this special slave has been given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala special rahmah and uh, has been given a special ilm that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to him so and then and in surah al-kahf Musa alayhi salam said qala lahu Musa hallat tabi'uka ala an tu'allimani mimma ulimta rushda قَالَ إِنَّكَ لَن تَسْتَطِيعَ مَعِيَ صَبْرًا That when Musa alayhi salam said that can I stay with you so that I can learn from you that knowledge that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught you and can you teach me something from it and Khidr alayhi salam said that you will not be able to hold your ground and patience the knowledge that I have. So Ibn Kathir is of the opinion that if he was not a prophet of God, then Musa alayhi salam would not have spoken to him in this manner and would not have requested him to teach him that particular, you know, knowledge that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you. Because prophets are innocent, awliya are not innocent, they are ma'asum, from there they are, they, uh, they have no sense, the prophets and the messengers, but awliya cannot make that claim. And all the actions of Khidr alayhi salam, if he was a wali, wali is not allowed to go against the sharia. It doesn't matter. Uh, it just never allowed in the sharia to go and break somebody's property or to kill somebody. Um, so those couple of actions that Khidr alayhi salam did, if he was just a wali, wali has to follow a sharia. And Prophet is the one that is given a sharia. So uh, he need to have certain set of knowledge to be able to do these things. And when Khidr alayhi salam says uh, that whatever I did, وَمَا فَعَلْتُهُ عَنْ أَمْرِي I didn't do this on my own. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed me to do these things. So this is a clear, a clear uh, uh, statement where it states that he was a prophet of God, not just a saint. So that's the viewpoint of Hafiz ibn Kathir as he draws this conclusion from the statements in the ayahs of the Quran and that has been expressed in Qasasul Anbiya, volume 2, pages 522-523 and also in Al-Bidaya wa Nihaya, volume number 1, page 328. And some of ulama are of this opinion that when Khidr alayhi salam said, وَمَا فَعَلْتُهُ عَنْ أَمْرِي I didn't do this out of my own action. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's direct order on which I acted upon this. So some of the ulama are of this opinion that he was getting revelations from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he just acted on those revelations and somebody who is not in the capacity of a prophet cannot claim to be receiving a wahi from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, because the actions that he performed, the knowledge that he expressed definitely have only a prophet, somebody of, of the level of the prophet could do those things. 
And then how can a prophet be following somebody who is not a prophet? So that's also a viewpoint of some of the ulama. And Hafiz ibn Hajar Asqalani, uh, who passed away in, in 852 Hijri, which is like almost 600 years ago, um, and you probably might have heard of his, his name because he has done an extensive amount of work in Hadith and in the Seerah. Uh, so he writes uh, that Musa alayhi salam and Khidr alayhi salam, whatever different kind of things that happen between the two and the conversations, if you study this, uh, you will be, you will come to this consensus that Khidr alayhi salam has to be a Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and as expressed in Al-Isaba volume 2 page 290. And just so that you know Ibn Hajar Asqalani, uh, he is, uh, his name is Ahmed, son of Ali, son of Muhammad and son of Muhammad and he's commonly known as Ibn Hajar Asqalani. So Ahmed bin Ali bin Muhammad bin Muhammad al-Ma'ruf Ibn Hajar Asqalani, he is the one who wrote a very famous Sharah of Bukhari and he is also a muhaddith, a faqih, and he's also a poet. And if you want to know, and you, some of you probably, you know, if, if you are one of those people who are, who have studied the Shuruhat of Bukhari, you probably would have read through uh, Fath al-Bari, which is the most uh, sharah, a famous sharah of uh, Bukhari. Similarly, Al-Isaba fi tamayyiz al-Sahaba, similarly, Lisan al-Mizan, Tabqat al hafaz these are some of his very famous works. Similarly, among the Mufassirun, Imam Zamakhshari, he, his, he passed away uh, 538 Hijra, which is 900 years ago. And he's also of the opinion that Khidr alayhi salam was a prophet of God. And Allama Zamakhshari, I don't know how many of you know the, him uh, as an individual. Uh, his kunya was Abu Al-Qasim and his name is Mahmoud bin Umar al Zamakhshari. And uh, he wrote a very, very famous work of Tafsir al-Kashaf. And uh, he was... Um, uh, he, uh, similarly, a very famous mufassir by the name of Imam Qurtubi, who also passed away almost 800 years ago. He is also of the opinion that Khidr alayhi salam is a prophet of God. And Imam Qurtubi is the one who wrote a very, very famous book of tafsir called Al-Jami' al-Ihkam al-Quran. And again, for those of you who are familiar with uh, the books on tafsir or if any of you have um, are from the ulama, you probably know these books and these individuals that I am mentioning. And for those of you who are unaware of these individuals, I'm mentioning these names with somewhat their details just so that it will help you gain more knowledge about these people and their extensive work. So again, he's also of this opinion as uh, Imam Al-Qurtubi in Al-Jami' Al-Ihkam Al-Quran uh, and he states that in, uh, in his famous work of tafsir, this particular viewpoint. And similarly, Allama Alusi, rahimahullah, uh, who is uh, Sayyid Mahmoud Al-Alusi, very famous mufassir, and he uh, passed away uh, very recently. I mean, like less than 200 years ago, he passed away. So he's from the recent times, Mufassir. And he has a very famous work of tafsir, very detailed work of tafsir called Ruh al-Ma'ani. And in which he has given a uh, very different uh, kind of a tafsir it is. Um, anyway, it has 30 volumes, that's how extensive that work is, just so that you know. So Allama Alusi, he also is considered as one of the famous people among the Sufiya in the modern times. And he's also of the opinion that Khidr alayhi salam is the prophet of God. And among the people of the book, Jewish people and the Christian people, some of them are also of this opinion that Khidr alayhi salam was sent as a prophet towards them. Abu al-Hasan Ramani, who passed away almost 1100 years ago, and Ibn Jawzi, who passed away almost 900 some years ago, uh, are also of the similar opinion. And they are like, they, they basically are say that people of the book are of this opinion, and they have stated that in their works. And I don't know if you guys are familiar with Abu al-Hasan um, Ramani. He is uh, he's famous for his work in fiqh, 
in Nahaf, Arabic grammar and kalam, he's considered as one of the people um, who are considered as experts in this field. Uh, his name was Ali bin Isa and Nahwi, uh, but he's commonly known as Ar Romani. And similarly, Ibn Jawzi is Abu Faraj Abdul Rahman. He's commonly uh, known as Ibn Jawzi. And he's a famous mufassir, muhaddith, faqih. Um, in the work of literature, he did an extensive work. He's also a very famous khatib and historian who authored, who penned down more than 300 books. And um, thousands and thousands of people have accepted Islam. Some books state that close to 20,000 people have accepted Islam through um, your speeches um, and uh, almost... A hundred thousand people have repented after listening to you or reading your work. So uh, both of them are of the opinion that, uh, yes, he is uh, a prophet. And this is also mentioned in Ali Saba, volume number two, pages 288 to 89, and Al-Zuhr al-Nadr, page number 68. And Abdullah ibn Abbas, who's a famous companion and cousin of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam, son of Prophet's, cousin, uh, Prophet's uncle Abbas, Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, and a tabi'i who is a Jewish scholar who accepted Islam at the time of Umar radiallahu anhu, his name is Wahab ibn Munabbah. They both are of the opinion that uh, he is a prophet, but he was not sent towards any particular people. So we call it غير uh, مرسل. And this opinion is also stated in Ali Saba, volume 2, pages 288-289, and Al-Zahr al-Nadr, page number 68. So I believe all of this detail that I have gathered for you, it might be a little heavy for some of you, but the whole idea is to tell you the different viewpoints and opinions. And in conclusion, I want to tell you what my opinion is. Uh, my opinion, I am of this viewpoint that he was a prophet of God. And, but he wasn't sent towards any particular people. So anyway, uh, till next time, we will be bringing you a little bit more detail about Khidr alayhi salam. But inshallah, uh, in the next lecture, till then. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, please subscribe to our channel. Please support us. Please like, share our videos, and put your comments down in the comment section below. Till next time, assalamu alaikum.